Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Irish Media Network Weekly Esports Roundup. My name is Darren Hardox, and this is the pilot episode of what will hopefully become a fantastic esports show covering esports all around the world and in Ireland. At the moment, we'll mostly be covering Overwatch, as that's my area of expertise, but in the future, as we get more comfortable with the show, we'll be moving on to other esports like League of Legends, Call of Duty, CSGO, Valorant, all that sort of stuff. Maybe in a little bit of chess, if we have time for that. Uh, but for now, anyway, we'll be covering mostly Overwatch in a, a weekly 30-minute time slot. Uh, so I suppose let's get right into it with the Overwatch. League 2021 season format. We received some news about that uh, a few weeks ago from uh, John Specht, who's the AO commissioner. Uh, the season starts in April, which is uh, a bit later than it usually is. It's usually around February time, but as a result of COVID and UV's issues, I'm sure they've uh, had to delay that somewhat. Uh, we'll, there'll be plenty of off-season tournaments to help us bide our time in between uh, then and now which we'll keep you updated on. The first of which was the Kanazaka tournament in which uh, AFK and Spawn took quite handily against Big Chungus Enterprise, which of course are very professional team names with players such as Blase and Dante, the Houston special, but we'll have more on that later. So basically it'll be four matches per team every month determines qualifications and seeding for monthly tournaments, uh, similar to the second half of the 2020 season with the May Melee and the Summer Showdown. Um, hopefully they keep that naming structure and have, we'll have the July Jamboree at some point. And there's two regions, like last year, we've got the Eastern or APAC region with the Chengdu Hunters, the Guangzhou Charge, the Hangzhou Spark, the Los Angeles Valiant, the New York Excelsior, Philadelphia Fusion, Shanghai Dragons, and the Seoul Dynasty. And in the Western region or the NA region, we've got Atlanta Rain, Boston Uprising, Dallas Fuel, Florida Mayhem, Houston Outlaws, London Spitfire, Los Angeles Gladiators, Paris Eternal, San Francisco Shock, Vancouver Titans, Toronto Defiant, and finally, the Washington Justice. As of now, this is all the info we have on the 2021 season format, but as we get more information, we'll keep you updated uh, as we do weekly. So I suppose we have to move on to the uh, most important section of every esports show, and that being power rankings, uh, despite them being incorrect each and every time they're done. We'll start with the APAC region, and in number eight, of course, it has to be the Los Angeles Valiant, because this team is just chaos incarnate. Uh, after the signing window closed, where you can pick up players, they drop their entire roster and move to the eastern region from the west and I, I don't know what they're going to do to be honest they've got no coaching staff they've got no players obviously the organization has no interest in uh, putting up a sufficient roster for this season so really we'll just have to see what happens i think it's going to be a disaster for them this year because not only do they have an organization who clearly doesn't want to do well this season they also don't have their pick of the litter because signing windows over all the good players have been picked up so really it's going to be a disaster for valiant this year Number seven, we've got the Hangzhou Spark uh, with a roster of Shai, Godsby, Architect, Sobin Su, Gushui, Takayaki, Liga, Bernard, IDK, Mika, MCD, and Colas. Uh, what's interesting about this roster is that even though they have one of the, they're one of the few teams to have a 12 man roster, I think they're still going to have some flexibility issues, like especially with their DPS line. Godsby and Architect are fantastic players as we've seen in the past, but I have some questions about Sobin Su. He was fantastic for the Vancouver Titans in season two, but that was mostly on uh, characters such as Zarya, who's a tank, and Reaper, who really isn't one of those heavy-hitting mainstay DPS characters. They might have some issues with the DP DPS lineup, and although their tank line uh, with Gushui, one of the best main tanks in the world, that will be strong. I'm not sure it really is good enough to hold up against the rest of the Eastern region, which is notoriously very powerful every year. In sixth place, we've got the Chengdu Hunters with Leave, Jinmu, Jimmy, Kaneki, uh, Gaga, I'm not sure that's pronounced G-A-9-A, uh, Ameng, Elsa, Leitjung, Nisha, Iveltal, and Faraway, 1987. And when it comes to the Chengdu Hunters, nothing matters. Uh, your your predictions will be boomed. You are in the Chengdu zone now. Nobody knows what's going to happen. We have seen a lot of Wrecking Ball play in uh, the Kanazaka tournament uh, and uh, other such things, but I'm not sure that Wrecking Ball is going to be meta uh, by the time we get to L, which would benefit the Hunters with uh, obviously Ameng on the Wrecking Ball. But, I just, just don't see a, a world in which Wrecking Ball is meta still in April time. So we'll just have to see, play it by year, see how the Hunters do. In fifth position, we've got the Guangzhou Charge uh, with players like Michaeli, Eileen, Choi Sihuan, Krong, Ryo, Jihun, uh, Mandu and Kariv. They've got a very solid tank and support line as well as big pop-off potential in DPS. Uh, we've seen players like Eileen in the past just absolutely go nuts on the Doomfist, for example. So hopefully we see some of that this season. If they get an Anna Ryan meta, I think they'll do particularly well as they've got the, the duo of Rio and Kariv. Obviously, Rio, fantastic Reinhardt, and Kariv, just an absolute nutter on the, <laughs> on the Anna in seasons past on the LA Valiant. In fourth place, we've got the New York Excelsior. And uh, this lineup is really the touch-and-go lineup. They've got Feather, Ivy, Flora, Guangboon, Bianca, Yakpun, Jonak, and Friday. There's a lot of potential at the TVS position. They've picked up young 
hungry GPS players who really want to show themselves in the league this year. Uh, obviously, they've also got some uh, veteran DPS presence with people like Ivy. Uh, but some questions, I do still have some questions about their lineup, uh, particularly at the tank position. Think about Yakpung in season two for Toronto Defiant. Really, he was the biggest weakness in their first stage where they, they went five and two, but it was only downhill from there. Uh, and he was just, a, uh, I think the term is over aggressive on the Reinhardt uh, somewhat. But if they can clean up his play, then there is some promise for this roster. Not as much as last year or the previous years, but uh, I think New York did need that rebuild when they go so many years without giving the title. Uh, in the third place position, we've got the Philadelphia Fusion, who really need to step it up this year if they finally want to get that title. We've got Carpe, Shockwave, EQO, Mano, Poco, Funny Astro, and Alarm. Some significant upgrades uh, this year. I think Mano is a clear, clear improvement over Sado. Although Sado was a great player, I just think play style difference they, they really need to shake, shake things up. They've been up there. They've gotten like second place in season one. They had a bit of a rough season in season two, but last season they uh, got to the final four, but they've never been able to finally get any titles, not even in stage playoffs. So they really need to shake things up and a change of play style might be good for them, even if it comes with losing their star player in Sado. They still have Carpe, who obviously is the the explosive hit, hit scan DPS, and they brought in Shockwave from the Vancouver Titans, so there is potential for pop off uh, for pop off plays from the DPS position. In the second place position, we've got the Soul Dynasty with Fitz, Prophet, Sebiolbi, Gesture, Marvel, Two You, Creative, and Animo. I mean, what can you say? This is just an incredibly well rounded roster. Lots of big talent like Sebiolbi, Gesture. Like these are just titans of the industry. Could use an additional support player for flexibility, like Creative. Had a bit of a rough season towards the end of it. He did step into uh, the shoes. Uh, Bedosin, obviously, he was uh, trying to share that position. He managed to take the spot off him for the grand finals. But uh, if there's a double off or main support meta, they could have some issues. But other than that, it's streaky. So, like, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. They can go 0-4 in the seeding for the uh, regional tournaments and then just come on the day and win the whole thing. That's all. That's what they do. And of course, that leaves in the number one position, the Shanghai Dragons. And who else is it going to be with a DPS lineup that is, quite frankly, disgusting? They've got Lip, Fleda, Erster, and DM at DPS. And then for tank line, they've got Fate and Void. And at the uh, support position, they've got Lejigon, Izayaki, and Molly. I don't think it should be legal to have a DPS lineup like that. That is just disgusting. They're having players like that, and that means that two of them are going to have to be on the bench at one time. That is just insane. And obviously, and even... After that, they've got Fate and Void at the tank line. Like, Fate, obviously, top three main tank uh, for season one with the LA Valiant. Had a bit of a rough season uh, from there on out with Florida, but very solid all the way. And Void was, uh, I think, a top one main tank last year. Like, if Shanghai Dragons do not perform this year, it's an absolute travesty. And they should really be looking at internal issues if they don't manage to at least get top three. And that brings us on to the uh, NA scene, of course. And... Unfortunately, at number 12, we've got the Paris Eternal uh, with Naga, Onigod, Suna, Elevote, Dan, Neptuno, and Khan. While the ne there will be some veteran presence with Neptuno, uh, it will be appreciated. I think it's a bit inflexible at the tank position uh, and support positions. Uh, and I'm just not sure what their goal was. Like, they went for the EU squad season one. It didn't work out. They had a, an average season. And then they added some Korean players like Sparkle. They basically hired Element Mystic. And they had a fantastic season. They did a lot better than people expected them to. Uh, and then they just decided to sell the entire roster. And not only that, they decided to sell some of the EU players that have were incredibly improved. Ben Best in season two was one of the average or below average main tanks, but he was nearly top five by the end of uh, season three as a result of the uh, coaching staff from Paris Journal. So I'm really not sure what their intentions are, whether they're going budget or, or I don't know what's going on. And in the 11th place position, we've got the Vancouver Titans with players such as Dalton, Linkser, Tiru, Shredlock, FRD, Rolf, and Fire. Uh, I think the biggest weakness of the Titans this season is going to be their tank line. They've had their moments like Shredlock on the Orissa uh, towards the end of last season, but I don't think they really match up well to the rest of the league. So it, if they can get some sort of system going, get that synergy up, maybe they have a chance. But I, from what I can see here, it's not going to happen. place position we've got uh, the Houston Outlaws with Dante, Happy, Hydration, KSF, Jake, P, 
Piggy, Jangu, Crimzo, and Juby. Uh, GM Kulmat, obviously player for them for the past three seasons, been there since the inception of the organization. He seems to be taking the team in the right, right direction. And while I do appreciate Jake's veteran presence, he's one of the staple characters in the league, not just as a player, but just as a personality. I'm not sure it's really going to be enough to elevate this team uh, so far, considering how much the competition has improved uh, between uh, the end of last season and the start of this season. In ninth place, we've got the Toronto Defiant with Logix, Hisu, uh, Neist, Sado, Beast, Michelle, Ansun Jay, Aztec, and Lastro. And while there are some fantastic names on this roster, I'm just confused as to why they've hired so many Korean players from, uh, for example, like Sado and Michelle from Seoul and Philly, respectively. But why have they decided to keep on some uh, Western players? Uh, if they're trying to have a mixed roster, I think it'll really hurt their communication and their team's energy. So that's why I've placed them uh, at this position as opposed to any higher. But if they can overcome those issues or maybe even just drop the Western players, although they'll be a bit heartless, then maybe they can get something going. But uh, it remains to be seen anyway. At the number eight position, we've got the London Spitfire with Blase, Hybrid, Sparker, Shax, Hadi, Mulfig, Ripa and Kellex. And I think this roster lives and dies by the tank line. And it really is EU's chance to show what contenders can be. EU, famously known for their uh, tanks since uh, the start of Overwatch, uh, Hadi and Mulfig, they are one of the most explosive tank lines uh, in EU. And hopefully they can become one of the most explosive tank lines in NA once they move on to this season. They will, however, have some ping issues as far as I'm aware, because uh, there's players in NA, there's players in EU, they're a bit split. So uh, as far as I'm aware, there is a system Blizzard that is take, uh, that is bringing in that will reduce the difference in ping by increasing the ping for other competitors, which we're not sure how that's going to work. Uh, so it might even the playing field a bit, but I'm not sure it's really going to be enough to get them into a top five position. At the seventh position, we've got Atlanta Rain with Edison, Pelican, Kai, Gator, Hawk, Massa, and Iris. And I think all that really needs to be said about this team is that they could use some backup. They have got seven seven man roster they could use some backup at the support and tank positions in the case of double off tank off double main tank double main support off support meta such and such uh but other than that it's quite explosive you've got edison and uh kai they're just explosive dps you got gator and hawk uh who have been playing together for years at this stage obviously they were on the uh atlanta academy team that uh went through and did had a fantastic performance in the uh, gauntlet so it remains to be seen if they can get the synergy together and uh, if people play up to their standards, they could have a quite a promising season. At the number six position, we've got the Dallas Fuel, uh, or the Paris Eternal from last year, if you will, with Exe, Sparkle, Doha, Fearless, Hanbin, Jexe, Fielder, and Repel. Uh, and I, all I have to say is I feel really bad for Hastro's accountant after these pickups. Like they, Dallas has the curse every year that they uh, spend money to improve the team and it doesn't work out. And once again, they just rebuild the roster from scratch. And if this isn't the year that it happens, then this organization is entirely doomed. They've just picked up the entirety of Element Mystic from, from years ago. They've got Fearless, who I think might be at this current stage, the best uh, Winston in the world. They've got Sparkle, might be one of the best guys in the world. They've got Exe, Fantastic McCree. So they've got all the pieces there. If they can put it together, then they I think they will uh, surpass this number six spot. But I'm being cautiously pessimistic uh, at Dallas right now as a result of the org's history. At the number five position, we've got the Boston Uprising with I'm 37, Color Hex, Soon, Valentine, Fusions, Stand One, Punk, Myeongbong, Faith, and Faith. And originally, while I was writing these notes, uh, I said we need to pick up a strong main support and maybe another flex DPS uh, to make the roster more flexible. And within uh, three days or so, they had picked up Faith and Valentine from WGS Phoenix. And that's just, what else can you say? I think this roster really, they've had some rough years. I've been a Boston fan myself through it all, so there's no bias, but I think this is the year that they really start to move forward and break through uh, the mental boomage of the past few years. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the, the tank battle between Fusions and Stan 1, who wants to get that starting roster spot. Uh, Stan 1 obviously had a fantastic year last year on the Shanghai Dragons, but Fusions, I think, is one of the hungriest players in the league. He never lets any losses get him down. He's always trying to improve his play uh, and he's a real team leader in that sense. So we'll see uh, who is the starting tank, for, main tank for the Boston Uprising. At number four, we've got the Florida Mayhem with Yaki, BQB, Checkmate, Gargoyle, OG, Slime, and Gangnam Jin. 
Uh, this is just a fiery roster through and through. Like you've got the likes of OG on it, who's famously a very streaky player, but once he's once he reaches those peaks, those peaks are goddamn high. Uh, if they if the meta goes their way, they'll be practically unstoppable. If they get the synergy on their way, they'll be practically unstoppable. But if that does not happen, it could spell disaster for what was one of the most solid teams last year. At the number three spot, we've got Jerry, Decay, Tuba, Assassin, Mag, Fury, Rhea, Closer, and Bebe. And while I would love to spend my days screaming Jerry at, into the void, this is the Decay show. Uh, and with the tank line of Mag and Fury backing it up, everyone should be terrified of this team. Uh, obviously, Decay last year played for Dallas and was uh, traded to Washington just for the playoffs where he just breezed through everyone on Zarya. Uh, and we've had some, quite frankly, scary performances from him on the Widowmaker. So really, if they can get him up to full, like going full speed, then they, this team is unstoppable. Number two, we've got uh, the LA Gladiators uh, with Birdring, Kevster, Mirror, Muse, Space, Moth, Shoe and Skewed. And I think the key to their success is the uh, synergy between the tank line. Uh, if they can get Space and Muse synergizing well, then there's n- they're just a force to be reckoned with. They've got Birdring, who really has been on form the past year. He had a bit of a, a slow season, season two, after his uh, victory in season one with the London Spitfire. Uh, obviously, you've got Moth, one of the possibly, I think, the best flex, not uh, main support in the league. Uh, you've got Shu, one of the best flex supports. So this is just a very solid roster overall. And more importantly than that, they're not as fiery like other top teams. So they, they'll be consistent, I think. But there is no consistency in this world quite like that of the San Francisco Shock, who, of course, have to be taking our number one spot with Striker, Tayo, Nero, Glister, Smurf, Super, Choyobin, FD God, Violet and Twilight. In a vacuum, the three-peat has already happened. The foundations are still there, and there's no reason to think that they will not be dominant. They still have Krusty. They still have the DPS lineup. Uh, they have. They still have the DPS lineup of Striker and Tayo. Tayo hasn't gotten much playtime, but there is opportunity there. Nero, of course, fantastic flex DPS from NA. Uh, they've got Choi Hoban. They've got Super. They've got Smurf. They've got everything they need to make it a three-peat. Uh, and I suppose that is all I can really be said about our power rankings. Uh, we'll be updating them at some point before the season starts, as everything changes and everything we said was wrong here. Anyway, I suppose we should move on to the uh, off-season tournaments that we've seen so far. Uh, the first of which was the Kanazaka tournament. Uh, pre- it was a couple of weeks ago at this stage, uh, and it was to celebrate the uh, introduction of the Kanazaka deathmatch 4v4 map. We saw, of course, uh, AFK and Room taking first place against Big, Big Chungus Enterprise, uh, with players such as Blase, Dante, uh, and then two other players, two contenders players called OG and Speedily, uh, who I expect to see in Overwatch League as soon as they come of age. In Korea, it was taken, the day was taken by the O2 boys, and there is no points uh, for guessing which team they're from. Given it's 4v4, I'm not sure how much we can really uh, look into uh, the heroes that were played during this uh, as to potential metas for Season 4, but we did see a lot of Roadhog and uh, Baptiste, as we did in, at the end of uh, the last season, so it's it's on the table anyway. But more importantly was the next cup, which took place just a a couple of weeks ago. Uh, It's probably the most insightful glimpse into the 2021 season that we'll get before it even starts. Although it was only a bit limited with only four teams participating, those being Shanghai, uh, Seoul, Guangzhou, and interestingly enough, Dallas. (coughs) Shanghai took the title with Seoul just behind in second place, and then subsequently Guangzhou taking third and Dallas fourth. Uh, Most games were a bit one-sided, to be honest, uh, apart from a particularly exciting match between Seoul and Dallas, which really went down to the wire. Main takeaway from this tournament, as far as I can see, is that Seoul is as streaky as ever. And that's just what Seoul is going to do. Uh, They're a very similar 2020 team to what they had in the 2020 season. And they had middling to awful performances in group stages. Uh, And then when the playoffs started, that's when they kicked it into high gear uh, and just went for it, like middling uh, regular season results and then eventually being run up for the whole year. Shanghai looking uh, dominant as usual. And they're, as I said, even hungrier for the win this year. They feel they may have, I think they fe- may feel they were cheated out of the win last year, uh, coming in uh, third place overall after a, a loss to Seoul. Uh, so they really, really want the win this year. And with that DPS lineup, there's, I'm not sure there's going to be much that they can do to stop them this year. Uh, Guangzhou, Guangzhou looks steady, if a bit behind the pack. Uh, and as for Dallas, I have to say I'm worried. Uh, although it is a bit difficult to say because they're up against such strong uh, opponents. 
but they really didn't stand up to the mark, to be honest. Uh, and if this is the general, if this is how things will continue as the season starts, then Dallas fans be scared for meltdown number four. Um, <clears throat> going one and two with a minus five map differential in a tournament like this is just really not good enough if you're spending that kind of money trying to be a top team. I mean, if it, and if Dallas can't make a, a top playoff run this year, uh, then I think Envy might need to have to cut their losses and look at other opportunities. As for the meta, we saw a lot of Brigitte and Lucio, which I'm sure every person is going to be delighted by, alongside a surprising amount of Monkey Diva uh, slash uh, Monkey Zarya, as well as a lot of Wrecking Ball and Diva, uh, which, as to be expected, Wrecking Ball has been very strong in the rank ladder for the past few months. But uh, as I said, I don't expect that to be the case uh, when the season starts. And as for DPS position, uh, we saw a lot of Tracer slash Sombra, just good mobility dive here is to complement the monkey or uh, wrecking ball uh, tank line. Next tournament uh, to be taking place is starting in a few hours actually as time of recording with the shock taking on the world in BlizzCon Online. We won't really get much information from this because it's more arcade type uh, events but we'll, in weeks to come we'll definitely keep you updated with the results. And unfortunately that's all the time for that's all the time we've got for this week. You can follow us on Twitter at at IR Media Network and at just at Irish Media Network on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to bringing you the news in the weeks to come. Cheers.